we need is to cut a bloody big hole in this, didn't we? Dirty great big hole. For this thing, this boy. It's gonna sit in there like that. So we've got a nice thing. And a hub. And a hub. A few more things to do. Because of the nature of these units, um, we're limited on where we're gonna put the sergeant units, aren't we? Right, we've got to mount the unit on a spare drawer. Because obviously where the fridge is going, in that cupboard there, we're not going to need one. The only place that we can really put this is going to be in there. We're going to put the battery underneath it, but this is going to fit in there and it's going to be blanked off and then we'll have a couple of switches in there for various things. So we're going to mount, mount the sergeant unit in there like that and then we're just going to fix the board that's in there to the sides. So when you open the cupboard, you've got access to the sergeant unit and you can get all the stuff in there. We might have jumped the gun here and got a little bit carried away. Um, I'll show you what's down there in a minute. But we've got the units in. We've got the fridge there. That's all wired in as well. We've got the top units up. Looking good. One of the problems that we come across, so not a problem, but like you've seen where we fitted the electrics, we're going to get onto that in a minute because, hmm, let's put it this way um, Alex from Mispronounced Adventures and Adrian from My Swedish Life they pointed a little thing out to us we'll talk about that in a minute yeah but that's gonna be one to stick around for anyway with these units there's not really anywhere for us to put plugs or 240 sockets and things like that so we kind of have to adapt things a little bit now when we were originally doing the van we were going to have the units come up to there so I left that piece on the side so we could screw too now it looks a bit ugly hmm just there that thing we've been thinking what we can do with it we didn't have a clue but then we come up with a bright idea and I'll show you when we cut the sink out there was this pretty big hole Okay, you don't have to be bothered about cutting your hole for your sink because they will do it for you. But there's a bit of a bonus that we've come across, which is going to kill two birds with one stone. So, the side piece, which is bloody ugly. Um, yeah, could knock it off, could re-carpet over there. Don't really want to, because all the carpet's nice and it's all done. We've also got the problem of no sockets anywhere. Gone and made this. This is the bit that was in the sink. Now, bear with me because where the fridge goes there was a door on there we've got a door spare so we got a bit a hole we've got a door sort of give me an idea this piece that is going to go in there like that yes i know it needs sides on but like i've just said we've got a door spare from where the actual fridge is you see where i'm going with this can't you so we're gonna get in there, we're gonna make a template for the sides. We're gonna have a switch on there for the lights that are under there. We're gonna have another switch for some special lighting, which I won't tell you where they're gonna be, but they're gonna look good. Um, and yeah, the couple of USB sockets. And then you've got two fours, so you're right there. If you want a laptop here, you get your sockets there. This will go back a little bit if, we, if need be, so at the maximum it's going to go back to there which is probably better so what we need to do now is basically mark up where they're going to go and get the sides made whilst Neil's fiddling around with his planks um, we've um, I, I am not fiddling around with planks I am scribing stuff in to areas to make it look more pretty while you're messing around with your fabric Oh, <laughs> well, if you just pulled them up correctly in the first place, we wouldn't have this issue, would we? Hang on a minute. Right. These curtains, they're good, right? But one, two pop studs, not acceptable in my book. No, not acceptable. So, come hey, up with a plan. ranting. Honestly, all he does is moan. Right, so we've come up with a solution. We have bought some pop studs and a little kit 
Obviously, we've got far too many popsicles there, but hey, who cares? A little kit, so we're just going to punch some hole in the fabric. You might want one of them. I could do one of these on a daily basis for you, to be honest. <gasps> That's just rude. As Crying Boy was saying, there's not enough pop studs for us just to make it look nice, neat, finished. So we're going to add a couple of extras in just to tidy off the edges. Hence the kit. And then while she's at it, she may as well do the back window as well. Because they only come with three. And I think you'll find they come with two on either side. Yeah, one well, at the middle bit. That's not acceptable there, Emma. Neither's your face. That bit there. Or your pointy waggly finger. Well, we've definitely got a line there. Right, I'm going to cut this out and see if this matches to the back of there. That should fit in there. Just like that. So guys, this is the last piece of the little unit here. As you can see here, there's a notch been cut out of the wood. That is because we have a box for the sockets there. Don't forget, this bit here that's been made doesn't actually come with the units. We've made it ourselves out of the cutouts and leftover bits and bobs, like doors and things. Oh, 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 oh yes. Like a glove. Like a glove. Wouldn't even know it's not part of the units, would you? Look at that! Well done, Neil. Boom! Right, we've got the units out, and what we're going to do now is basically screw these sides onto that, just using basically a couple of L brackets like them. Just put them on the side, hold it all together. Well, we've made a thing. We're just um, missing a switch. It's arriving tomorrow. Bloody Amazon. So, that can now get wired up. It's all been wired up in the back, as you can see. Plugs are going to be wired up to the sergeant unit. Two USBs, two lots of USBs. And then we've got switches for above the cooker and the sink. And then we've got another switch there the special lights the mood lighting <gasps> I told them oh the special light have I just done a you well we didn't record putting these together did we no we didn't we just got carried away <laughs> yeah we did but not like us that is it not at all these are the units that go next to the main units that makes your wardrobe yes but we're going to alter them just a little bit. Because we don't like keeping things normal, do we? No. So in the front of the wardrobe units, you've got two timbre doors, one this side, one this side. And then you open them out and that gives you shelving. On the back of the units, you've got one access door there. And then we haven't fitted this one yet, but we've got another little door that's going to go on here. And that's access to underneath from the back of the van. And then on the end that meets up to the actual main unit, you've got these two little pockets here. They're the bits that we're going to modify because we've got some of this left over. We're going to block this end off. Hi. Hi. Are you okay? Yes, Rock, paper, scissors? Two, three. <laughs> we're going to block that end off. So not if you put stuff in there, it can't fall out. That's the plan. Got a bit of wood, crack on. They're blocked off now, so it just means if you put stuff in there, it's not gonna come out, because that would annoy me. Underneath the cabinets here, there's a little strip, which is fitted in, and that's gonna have some LED lights going in. We're gonna drill up into this cupboard, feed the cable down to the switch in our self-made switch panel, wire them in, so a strip light will be under here. Boom! So we've got the lights up there, the cable comes down, and then it runs into the panel that we made there. 
So as well as wiring the switch in, we've wired the 240 plugs into the sergeant units as well. And also we have wired in the two USBs which are there. All we've got to do now is wire this last switch into the lights that are going on the front. Welcome to Confessions with Neil. One thing you can guarantee on this channel is when we mess up, which we do, we're going to tell you about it. We are fitting an SOK 206 amp lithium battery. The reason for fitting a lithium battery is that lithium lasts longer. It also charges quicker. And you also get more energy out of a lithium battery. If that was a 206 amp hour lead acid battery, we'd only probably get around about 100 amp hours of power. With a lithium battery, 206 amp hours, you're probably going to get about 190 amp hours of usable energy. So, that's okay. That's why we're putting one of their batteries in because it's a good size, it's a great product, and we've used them on other vans before and they're a cracking little product. Now, the problem with lithium and the problem with Fords is, like I've said, we didn't know. Smart alternators turn out that they're not so bloody clever because they won't charge lithium. We went and fitted a split charge relay. We put a post on Instagram and instantly my man over there in Sweden, our Swedish life, and Alex from Mispronounced Adventures both commented and both messaged me saying you're probably not going to be able to charge your batteries off that relay because the smart alternator in the fours doesn't allow you to do it. Also, the sergeant unit that we put in the van, you can't charge it off them as well. Although, the guys at 12 Volt Planet do supply a sergeant unit that you can charge off a smart alternator to a lithium or a lead acid or AMG battery. Now, the only route that we've got to go down is one of these boys. Yes, a Victron Orion DC to DC charger, which will allow you to charge off a smart alternator. We've got to get in there, we've got to fit this battery, we've got to put all the connections on the battery cables that go to the battery, and we've got to take this one, fit it in, and take the old one that we mistakenly put in the van out. So, as you can see there, we have a split relay charger, which is no good for this van. So we've got to take this out, We've got to take the fuse out and then we've got to remount the actual Victron Orion on there. Also moving the cables to where they're meant to go. Not really a hard job. The only problem we've got is that the Victron Orion is a lot bigger than the one that's in there. So fingers crossed it fits in nice. We've got just enough height. Oh, do you know what? It'll go in there. It'll go in there like that and then we'll have enough for the fuse to sit on the left hand side of it there which is fine so we'll get all this off and then we'll mount the actual Orion in its place and then we'll go from there so we got the Orion right there and then I put the fuse just there in the corner which is no problem at all so that's what it looks like when you open your unit obviously you get your Orion you've got your main control panel there your the kill switch for the battery and your fuse for the Orion, I will mark that up. Um, Orion on the front there with a little sticker. That's all in, that's wired in. So what I'm gonna do now is put the unit top back on, put the sink in, and then while it's all pulled out, I can get behind it, and I can wire the tap in and get that all working, and make sure that's all working fine. The way I've wired this up is temporary. It's only to show you for people who don't know. We have, that is the feed for your pump that goes into your water bucket. There is the negative, it gets to one side of your pump. And then your positive gets wired to one side of the switch, which is built into these things. That has got a switch in it. So we come in with the live into the switch. The other side of the switch comes out and goes into the positive of the pump. So you've got a negative and a positive, but with a switch in the middle. It looks complicated, it really isn't. Then all we gotta do is obviously if we had water in it would work. First of all, go on the sergeant unit, turn the pump on, and then when you lift this up, you will hear the pump kick in, which is located in the water bottle. Let's see if we can hear it. So lift this up. Stop it and it goes off. So it's in there, lift it up. That's on 
on now and if we turn this off that's isolated all we gotta do now is basically solder to connect all these up make them all tidy make them all safe and then tuck them away and get them fastened to the back so nothing can pull on them and they can't get moved if you don't understand any of that, please send Emma an email at emma at urbanvanlife.co.uk and just tell her that I am really confused. Right, so the old battery's out there. We've got the new battery for fit in there. We've just got to crimp all the connections up that are in there. Right, got these blocks off. They are all crimped up now, so the crimps can go away. We've got both the positive feeds crimped up and we've got the negative feed crimped up as well. So. We can connect them up and then I'll slide this boy in there. Give it a hoover in there first. Now I would like the battery in facing forwards but because of the height of it I don't think we're going to get it. We might be lucky. We might not be lucky. Oh, I think we might be able to do it. Now, let's go. Hey, <laughs> let's connect these bad boys. You got to admit, that does look nice with the lithium in there, doesn't it? Hey, now to turn it on. <laughs> there we go. It'll work, Neil. It'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Plenty of power. Everything works. Lights work. Lights work. Uh, lights work. Right. Now we've just got to program this boy. How's that looking? Fancy. And it, it works. Good. It works. It does work. You are correct. Look. It works. Well, yeah. Of course it works. Battery's gone from 12.9 to 13.5. Hence, meaning it works. Well done, Pooh. Are we keeping this now then? 